people that have the relevant academic background, they've studied, they have the working experience and the technical skill set. Those are going to be the future leaders of sustainability. Welcome back, everybody. Rich Brubaker, founder of Collector Responsibility, here today with another episode of the Sustainable Ambassador podcast. Through this series, I speak with sustainable ambassadors around the world about the work that they're doing. And today, I'm really excited to have Harko Leertower with me, who is the managing director of Acre Europe. They are one of the leading recruitment firms. And we're going to be talking today about the rise of the CSO, the rise of sustainable leadership. And then what's the path if you're a young professional, a college student looking to develop a career? What are the market trends? What are the paths? What are the tools that are required to fill this position. With that, I'd just like to say, Harko, thank you very much for taking this time. And as a starting point, would you mind introducing yourself and the work that you've been doing over at Acre? Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Rachel, for the introduction. And it's, it's really good to be here. And, and just, just as a brief intro of myself, so I've been at Acre uh, for uh, three years now. Sustainable recruitment is something that I've been doing for about the past six, seven years now. I've got a background in recruitment. And we see ourselves as a company that, that creates systematic change for our planet and society by activating people's potential. And recruitment, executive search, and, and interim or contract solutions is one part of the business. Um, but we also offer solutions when when it comes to talent development, leadership development, training and coaching and assessments. And we've recently launched an advisory business where we offer um, advice and, and consulting services uh, in this space between okay. uh, human capital, organizational development and sustainability. What is the current environment or what's the demand side of this that you're seeing? Like, Are sustainable executives, leaders in high demand right now? Is this a great time to be entering this market? The demand is 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 obviously rising. Uh, the majority of the talent that is coming to market at the moment is is hoovered up by the consultancies, by the rating agencies, by the right. certification bodies. Uh, so there's a lot of talent going there, and that mm -hmm. puts sort of the corporates, the institutions, but also the the the, the non for profit organisations under a lot of pressure to to get talent as well. Demand is uh, is uh, is high, and and supply is scarce. And there's also a uh, uh, there's not the right balance between what organizations are looking for and what is available at the moment. So you see a lot of dynamic, ambitious young people entering the markets and wondering why they don't get that roles that they're looking for, where everybody says we need more sustainability specialists. And that's because probably a lot of organizations have have left the, the the action that we need to take or that we had to take already 10, 15, 20 years ago up till now. So a lot of companies are now trying to get to pace and there's companies that are leading the way and that they have done a lot of work already. But reality is also that a lot of companies are just starting on their journey. Do they have structure, CSO, SVP, direct, or is what they have just really technically focused groups. The companies that do that well are usually the companies that have sustainability reporting into the boards or actually being a part of the of, of the boards. Fundamental to being successful is the, the absolute commitment of a CEO to be on the journey. If they don't have that, it's very difficult for the chief sustainability officer to truly make that impact. But if I look at the sort of the more global operating organizations, you see usually a minimum of 40 and it can be up to 150 people mm. in in a direct or indirect responsibility for sustainability. Uh, the, the top leading organizations now, they all have the chief sustainability officer. And then you right. see teams, and it really depends, of course, on sort of the industry, uh, the, the critical issues, the material issues in that specific industry that will decide what, what a team looks like. But most larger organizations that we work for, be it in textile, be it in raw materials, consumer goods, luxury goods, you name it, there's larger teams already, anything between the 40 and 100 people. That's usually what we see in as organizations. But if I look, if I look at, for instance, at a big uh, clothing uh, e-tailer that we've worked for, there's already 15 people only taking care of packaging. So you see, and this is another, probably another answer to the question of sort of talent. You see that those yeah. roles become more and more specialist roles. It sounds like the overall pool of talent required is growing right now. Absolutely. Yeah. If you look at the talent pool, does it exist or do we still have a big gap in the market? And then we're now having to kind of build into that. And then how do firms kind of identify the right people? Like what? where do you see that coming in? Yeah, so to answer the first question, the talent pool is not big enough. So it, it does exist, but it's not big enough for the demand at the moment. We see the sort of the successful sustainability leaders and those are not necessarily all CSO. We we have worked with our with our acre framework so that's our talent uh, assessment and development tool. We have identified the sort of the leadership skills needed uh, to be okay. successful in sustainability. 
sustainability. Um, and, and we've seen and, and we've assessed a few thousand people in the sustainability space over the past five, six, seven years, um, where we where we see the sort of the common traits of a successful sustainability leader, a change maker. And again, not all CSO high on that is uh, that these people, we call it have a, have a business view rather than an excuse for this, but a tree hugger mindset. So we need to understand people that can bring sustainability from what we call, again, the tree hugger mindset into translating it into business solutions and making it work for the business to improve the overall business. The second one very much related to that is that people that do that successfully, they have made an impact and have influenced others. Mm. What is something that we also have assessed throughout the years, one of the leaders skills is, is a growth mindset so really a yep. mindset of learning and adapting to different organizations and grow themselves into roles and, and the main driver for that is is that the roles that we see out there now they were not existent five or ten years ago and the right. the, the demands the talent demands that we're going to have in five or ten years these people are in going to be in roles that we haven't heard of yet so that growth mindset helps to shape the organization and, and drive the development of these roles where these individuals will be in and, and and, and probably the last one, which is very important, and it's related to the making an impact and influence other people. Um, and, and something that I mentioned earlier, the commitment from the CEO must yeah. be there. But by the same token, the chief sustainability officer must be able to influence executives uh, and influence the boardroom. And this is actually something where a lot of CSOs are currently still struggling in that role uh, of yeah. the still lack of impact that they have in the final decision, be it in the boardroom, be it on the shareholder meetings as well. It's interesting you didn't mention that they should have a technical expertise though. Is that important? Is that required? Or is it really communicating, leading, empowering that is the, the core to that? So we see that the technical skill set usually at the CSO minus one or minus two. Okay. Uh, where the, the team leaders, be it called the, the vice president or the directors, lead those teams that are responsible for the more implementation part of it, of, of sustainability. And that's where the technical skill set comes in. Mm. But again, the chief sustainability officer must be able to understand the challenges that their teams are dealing with. The problem is, for me, if you're going to be a CSO who's truly effective, you need to find the opportunities in sustainability as if it's a whole new market for the company. And I'm wondering, when you're looking at a CV or you're interviewing candidates, how do you assess their disposition in sustainability? Like one, their passion, but two, can they translate an opportunity? Like, is there specific questions you ask? Is it a feeling you get? Like, how do you assess that? The first step in, in that process is, is really identifying together with the clients or the organization that we're working for. What are the key topics for them? Where are they? What is their ambition level and what does the journey look like? That usually defines then a skill set that the individual must have uh, and, and, and that we're recruiting for. Now, with that skill set we or the, that profile, we go to the market looking for individuals. And usually there is an element of sort of past experience and the industries that work with and the topics that they've been dealing with. We then have a minimum of two in-depth interviews by different people in our team, in our organization. And that's where the Acre Frameworks comes in again, is the yeah. assessment tool where we're really assessing assessing on specific uh, leadership uh, issues in a specific organization. And so this gives a good overview on, on, on how people think, how they worked, how they act, which then gives us a, a, a safe basis to recommend, recommend candidates for a specific role. How often does the company understand the talent that they need? And are there some common areas that you think or that you see that they're, they're often a bit of a miss or they need a real bit of recalibration before that job spec is ready for the market? Probably 80% of the cases, we, we need to support the organization by asking the right questions to really make sure that they understand what they're looking for. And in a lot of cases, we were sent a job desk and in the end, the person that we were going to look for was a completely different profile. And I guess this is, this is the experience that, that we have in, in this space. Uh, and, and frankly, a lot of organizations don't have that experience yet because it's the first time that they hire an individual like that. But actually, the problem that they're trying to tackle, the challenge that they have is something else than they were initially thinking about. So that, that happens uh, happens a lot. Yeah. Can you talk to me a little bit about the different types of pools that you see in terms of candidates? Because you know, we have some senior leaders who are, you know, 40 to 60, maybe they came up through the business, they found sustainability and want to take that on. Then you have like the middle managers who are probably quite technical in nature, maybe studied environmental, maybe studied social, maybe have a sustainability degree. And they have the Gen Zs who are coming and they want to all save the world. The millennials are going to save us. If you look at the different pools, like are you 
or are there certain traits that you're really looking for from each different group? Like, are they all very different or do they all have some common traits that you think, okay, this is, this is a, a pyramid that's going to rise and we're going to be okay. The, 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 the Gen Z level that you mentioned, that's usually not the level that we recruit for. So we have more the, the senior leadership and the top leadership. That's the level that we work at. I think the sort of the middle level that you're describing with people that have the relevant um, academic background, they've studied, they have the working experience and the technical skill set. Those are going to be the future leaders of sustainability. And what we see with, with, with that group is that they're sort of both the right skill set, the right attitudes. Um, we may support these individuals with sort of the communication part and how can they actually sell their, their great ideas uh, and the work that we'll be doing because we see a lot of at this level people where they where they don't make the, make the impact uh, and that's not necessarily because they don't have the right skills and the right plans and the right ideas it's more about the influence that I mentioned earlier so the influence and the communication of it sort of the lower level the Gen Z we we don't work too much on that level I think what I what I do see and that's also related to work that I do university work is that idealism is, idealism is great and it's great to have dreams in a better world so I I, uh, but we support these individuals with sort of shaping the business sense and helping them to become business leaders as well. So if you're looking at the middle management right now, there's, there's a gap between the size of their pool and their skills to take the next step. What are some things that you would, I guess, advise they do to either upskill themselves or, you know, show themselves off a little bit? Or what are some things that they should they should fix, improve on? get ready for so that they're ready for the next the next job our advice usually goes towards organizations and the way that they uh, they work with the people that they have and training right the leaders of the business. And this is something as an organization that we go through as well, sort of making sure that the teams that you have, that you can actually improve those teams. Because the worst thing happening at the moment is that you already are short in your sustainability department. You need four or five people. You may not be yeah. a triple A company that everybody wants to work for. You may be a hidden champion. You may be working on a different location. Your your product may not be as exciting as as, as flashy branded consumer goods. Um, right. So you are already one step behind. And then actually you see people leaving to other organizations. So the advice that we would give and that we give to these organizations, how can you actually make sure that you can improve the teams that you have and make sure that people stay in your organization rather than, than going away? Um, and, and in addition, that sort of that middle tier leaders that you talked about, they are driven by a number of things. Um, and, and it's an interesting one, sort of right in the middle between sort of the old school, if they already exist, the old school sustainability specialists and, and, and the young people, uh, they are right in the middle there with so many opportunities at the moment to choose from so the proposition right. the job the organization the ambition the work that they do uh, in organization that work needs to be right so our advice is to the organizations is to make sure that uh, they have the right ambition level they don't need to be uh, on the top already mm -hmm. the journey to bring a company from uh, from the starting points and, and and supporting them on the way in the first step can be equally exciting as yeah. being the leading organization in the space but the advice is clearly towards the companies and the organization and and rather to the individuals uh, in those roles. Mm. Which are the industries that you think are really dying for talent right now? Like, which are the ones who are investing into this and are struggling the most with finding the right people or getting the work done? The, the bigger globally operating consultancies that are growing their teams, and obviously they work in different industries again, or rather there's a, a large need for talent there. We see a lot of work uh, happening in, 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 in the larger polluting industries, um, uh, transportation, real estate, textile, uh, where some organizations have already taken big steps, but overall, these are the organizations that have a big impact and, and by supporting these organizations the um, um yeah so I, I would say again textile is a lot of work happening happening at the moment uh real estate i think there's a lot happening in the agriculture space that needs support as well yeah. uh, and, and all these have a huge impact of course on the current challenges so what are those questions that companies should be asking themselves as they're looking at building out their talent pool the first question and we asked that on an individual level but also organization so you know why are you in this why are you in this game what, what is it in it for you what, where do you want to be where are you now but we just want to make sure that we understand the motivation we want to hear from usually the ceo or, or the vacancy holder that there's a really a clear balance between purpose and profit 
it's okay to have purpose and make profits, uh, but it needs to be in balance. And, and the way that we do our business, we want to see that with the client as well. An example, if they still talk about financial reporting and non-financial reporting, um, that's already sort of a sign for us. If they talk about integrated reporting, we see that they're already a step ahead of, of, of usually their, their, uh, their industry mm. competitors. So that's the sort of impression that we want for a for company. And it's really about that balance between purpose and profit. Where are they? Um, and that gives us yeah. a signal. And then we go deeper into conversation with these organizations. So if you were talking to a candidate who's in the, the upper middle reaches, and they're looking at actually taking that, that next leap into real executive leadership, be called yeah. CSO or SVP, what are two or three things that you think they should do, know, or be able to show that they can do to show that they're ready for that position? Yeah. So obviously, we look at people that have already let larger teams in organizations they need to have a track record in in implementing change and change management uh, making an impact so these are the things that we look at being there for the right reasons we feel that the most successful sustainability leaders have been passionate and have been able to communicate and translate that passion into actions for their teams um, in all fairness this is probably general career advice that we would give to anyone into leading a high performance or leading a team yeah. it's just that we see in a sustainability space it's much more complex and that CS CSO, we always say this is the sort of the spider in the web role, right? They expect from the CSO, they expect that they're going to solve the future of the company in the end. And by the way, it's also nice if you help saving the world. So this spider in the web where the person has so many, uh, they have so many uh, areas of responsibility to look at, you need to enjoy that role. You need to enjoy leading people to bring them the organization to the next level. So these are the things that we're looking for. But in general, general career advice that we give to people, and this is probably also to more younger people at their beginning of their careers. Yeah. Be passionate. If you don't find if you don't have your passion, find your passion. Um, start where you can sort of learn from the best, get on with work and, and pull up your sleeve and start working. Maybe a bit old school, but at the same time, there are so many challenges that we need to solve, which is not necessarily something that we can do with people that want to work three days a week and spend 50% of the time uh, working remote in Hawaii or Bali. Uh, there is really a lot right. of work to do. Uh, and, and that's the same thing. We look for those people that are really happy and curious to roll up their sleeve and get on with it. Thank you very much for your time. This has been amazing. My pleasure, Richard. Thank you. Thank you.